name is Bill Ryan, and welcome to my world. As a constitutionalist, I exercise my right of freedom of speech to uh, bring you uh, this video and uh, talk on subjects that uh, are quite possibly taboo. Uh, we're not allowed to bring up these subjects because it might be considered to be hate speech. And I don't hate anyone, I don't hate any religion, I simply use logic and reasoning to analyze um, things that I've encountered in life and try to make sense out of nonsense. And uh, so what I did was I wrote a book called Jesus Christ in Canon. And uh, basically it's uh, in story format it is the origins of Judaism, which uh, a spin-off became Christianity. And what I did was I went back in time and I looked up uh, who these people were, the main characters in, in, in historical events that changed the world. Um, so I looked up uh, who, who, who originated uh, Judaism. Uh, what was their life like? Uh, the guy apparently had four wives and uh, a dozen kids and what would life have been like at that time? What would he, how would he have put food on the table? How, what was the weather like? What, uh, what did he see? So I made up these uh, life experiences that uh, possibly would have affected his thinking and um, turned them into, uh, into stories. And I picked the, the specific um, uh, historically uh, turn of events that would have been major. Uh, Joan of Arc, um, Jesus Christ, um, Mary the mother, um, uh, when, when Christianity started to spread through the Roman Empire, what the Romans did to squash it, what the Jews did, how they killed Christians. Uh, then the tables turned and the Christians started killing the Jews and, and you know, fast forward we have um, many events that have changed the geography of the planet. And each one of those stories, I, I take as much factual information as I can uh, uh, get out of uh, the availability of that, that factual information and try to, again, on the human side, what would that person's life have been like? Where did they live? Did they have shoes? Uh, how, how did they eat? Uh, you know, what, what would their life have been like? What would they have seen? Their education? Uh, their knowledge, uh, and, and try to give it um, a, a real human factor that changed the course of time. And one that I, I feel is extremely necessary uh, to mention is what happened in uh, the, the Middle East. Um, what on earth are we doing over there killing all these Muslims. How did that happen? Uh, what, what turn of events in history permitted that to happen? And uh, one of the, the key uh, factors, as far as I'm concerned, are the, uh, the people in Palestine. Now, uh, again, it's none of our business what happens uh, in another country, or it shouldn't be, as long as it doesn't, if you're having a civil war, have a civil war. You need to kill each other to find your, the new leader of your government, you know, go ahead and do it. It, it's, it shouldn't be any, any of our, our business, but yet we seem to be over there all the time killing people. And basically what happened was um, a little bit over a hundred years ago, the uh, country of Palestine uh, was visited by a, uh, a female and uh, she was like a government spy and she went into this region 
where all the Muslims were warring with each other. And uh, she, even as a woman, these tribal leaders loved her because she had such good stories as the story goes. And basically what she did was uh, she went in and I personally believe she made deals with these tribal leaders. So you had a tribal leader over here, you had one over here, you had one over this way, and they're always fighting with each other. And uh, she made deals with them, this is my opinion, for the oil rights. So she said, uh, we'll, give, uh, uh, we'll give you money, we'll give, bring you a gold brick, as long as we can come in there and get that oil. And when this guy says, no, no, I don't want your money, I don't want you, you Christians, you white people in our, our, in our region. So go away. So she goes to the next one, and uh, she says, well, here, I'll give you guns so that you can kill your enemy over here, the one that won't work with us. But the only thing we want is uh, we want your oil. So the one says yes, and the other one says no. They get the guns. They wipe out the other one. Literally, she drew the maps of this region of the world, irregardless of what they thought and what they believed. So she makes a deal with the king of Jordan. Palestine gets cut in half. King of Jordan, now that land that used to be Palestine is now Jordan. And then uh, they decide to give away uh, a hunk of the property here to the Jews. There's your homeland. Go live there. Get out of our country. So they get the Jews down here, and what do the Jews do? Uh, over over time, over uh, endless battles, uh, confrontations, they literally uh, kicked those people off of their land. Can you imagine in one in a one hundred year time span, your your grandfather used to own this piece of property right here. And, and the Jews who are right next to it, they wanted it. So they just moved in and took it. They kicked you off the land. They didn't pay you for it. They didn't do anything. They just kicked you off the land. And that continued to this very day. It's still going on. And right now, the only parts of Palestine that are left is a tiny spot here and I, I believe another spot over here. And, and basically that's it. They have committed genocide against a race of people. Uh, I don't even think it was against their religion. I think it was just they wanted their land. So imagine you're a country and, and you need, uh, you know, you want to keep growing, so you just kill people and take their property. Well, you'd become very rich, wouldn't you? And, and it wouldn't be a problem. And that's exactly what the Christians did in France. South America, North America, uh, they just killed the indigenous people and took their land and justified it through whatever means uh, they, they want. It's, it's all part of the big game. What is the big game? Well, the big game started in 1835 approximately. England, France, Germany, Russia, the the, the uh, um, royalty the the royal families would interchange interbreed with each other and maintain control over world domination and the big game was between Russia and England and France to get control of this part of the world uh, they did in India. Uh, England uh, owned those people, taxed those people, uh, took their property, took their money. Uh, it just it went on uh, for for many many years. They occupied that nation, and now here we are, the United States, doing the same thing. We're coming in here and we're backing the uh, the the Jewish homeland and going against these uh, these other countries. 
and uh, and now we're over there in Afghanistan, and it just why are we there? We're there because it's still going on. The big game is still going on. And a lot of people have never heard of the big game, but that's, that's what the big game is. It's, it's, it uses religion, but it's really about getting control of the opium and the heroin so that they can get people addicted and get the money. That's what it's about. That's why opium is available in this country today through going to go to your doctor. They'll give you opium. Yeah, you can get addicted to that. No problems. That's that's how corrupt the whole system is, and that's why it's corrupt. And that's why we're over there right now, spilling our blood and losing the best that this nation has. Because these people, these hierarchy, these inbred royalties are still playing the big game. And that's essentially what the book is about. And it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim, you are being played so that they can get the money. We're all a bunch of suckers going along with their big game. It's just a game to them. Just, we, aren't, we don't have lives, we don't breathe air, we don't have children, we don't have homes, it doesn't matter. They want the money. It's all that matters is the money. And uh, it's, it's going to be disturbing for many people and many religions. But that's the way it is. That's what's going on. As I interpret it, as I look at the evidence that was uh, available to me at the time that I wrote the book, things change when uh, truth comes out, but suppressing uh, knowledge uh, or the truth by just one entity, like one corporation says, this is the truth and everybody else is lying and we're not going to let that information get out, will mean the literally the end of our constitutional rights of freedom of speech. So, um, and, and history is constantly being rewritten. Uh, history books are constantly removing history. Uh, I, I talked to uh, several young people I haven't taken a complete survey, but the disturbing part is young people don't know about the Korean War. Uh, how do you not know about Korean War? Didn't you have history in, in school? But well, they don't talk about the United States history. They talk about the global history. So people growing up in our society today, young men and women go off to war and have no clue that there was another war that we were involved. And by the way, that war, as far as the North Koreans are concerned, has never ended. That's why they do what they do. That's why they're still fighting. They got the whole world against them because the whole world is against them. And, and that's why, that's why uh, the, the, the third generation built the uh, leader, built those missiles that could reach the United States. He's a brilliant strategist. He brought the United States to him to make a peace agreement. Is there a full agreement yet? No, but it started. Finally, Donald Trump did the right thing and started moving us towards peace, which, by the way, as far as the big game goes, they don't like that at all. That's not what they want to hear. So, basically, that's what the book does. It takes us through those steps historically and blends in with it the, the, the people's lives who they would have met, who they would have talked to, what would the conversations have been like. And uh, so obviously it's speculation on my part, but the, the end results are, are, are historically true. So um, I personally think it's a good book, and uh, try to leave your religion out of it and look at what historically has happened uh, where these people use your religion to make you do things. And uh, I very much, my heart goes out to the Palestine people for uh, what this government, what this global society, uh, all part of the big game, everybody's stepping in line, uh, what they've done to those people. It is genocide, and there's no other way to describe it. And they're fighting like all hell for the remainder of what 
culture they have left, just like we're doing in Afghanistan and, uh, and, that, and these other countries uh, that did nothing to us. This, this is all a bunch of BS, and people are dying over there all the time to enrich, to get the opium and the heroin and enrich the Illuminati and the 11 inbred families that obviously have to be Satanists. So that's what the book's about. And it's not very long, it's not a big book, and it's uh, interesting in, in story fashion of these people's lives that changed the course of history and uh, the history that, that I know. Uh, obviously, if, if they're not teaching this in school, you're not going to know a lot of this history. But before it's removed from the internet, um, you, can, you can still look it up before corporations edit what information we have available to us. Um, anyway, that's the, that's the book. And uh, I want to thank you for watching this video. And I sincerely hope you enjoy the story. Thank you. Mm -hmm.